This is a demonstration of how to use Fuit to analyze memory leaks. So I have this pretty simple web page that just happens to leak memory in event listeners, which is a really common way for web apps to leak memory. So when I run Fuit on this URL, it should tell me that there's a leak in some event listeners. And it tells me that there's, there's four event listeners that leaked, click, resize, transition end, and transition start. So the way that you can debug this uh, pretty simply is if you go into the actual web page, and if we open it up, uh, what we can do is we can just look at the elements panel. And if I click about and then go back, what's happening is it's leaking event listeners on a few different nodes. And I can see it over here by clicking on event listeners, and I can see the transition end uh, has one listener. If I click about and then go back and then refresh, it's just increasing. Uh, there's a few other ways you can do it as well. You can also type get event listeners in the dev tools and then pass in say the window And I can see here that there are some resize listeners. There's two of them and if I click about and then back and Then query this again I'll see that there are now three resize listeners and you can actually just right-click on these listeners right here uh, if you expand this first you click this and then show function definition, and it'll actually show you where that was defined. So I can see that my leak is coming from right here. There's this add event listener on window, uh, adding resize. Also some other leaks right here. Another, another thing that might be leaking is DOM nodes. So I have another example of that. So in this case, it says that the DOM size grew by one node every iteration. It was a div element. Uh, so that means I can go in here and I can look up this website. And if I do that, uh, the easiest way to see this is to just kind of look at the DOM. I'll click about and then back. And you can see that there's a div that's being added at the end every time. Um, if you're not sure where it's being added, then the easiest way is just to type dollar dollar uh, star, and that will just give you all the elements in the DOM, assuming the chapter DOM isn't involved, but most of the time this will work. And so if I record this again, you can see it's just growing by one every single time. Uh, the last and most complicated category is when you have objects leaking, especially when those objects are added to an array or a map or a set or something like that. And I have an example of that happening here. So in this case, it's telling me that the culprit is some kind of object called some big object, which is hanging on to an array buffer of size of one megabyte. And uh, it also tells me that there was an array that increased by one and it contains this some big object. Now, if that isn't enough information to go off of, and sometimes it isn't, um, you can also run in debug mode and that will help you narrow down where it's coming from. So if you run in debug mode, you can open up the Chrome inspect tools then open the dedicated dev tools for node. And now inside of here, we'll just press play. And what it's gonna do is it's going to launch Chrome this time in, uh, in a headful mode. And then it's also gonna pause right before it starts running any iteration. So this is a good point in time to just like open up the dev tools. And you can just go ahead in here and just do exactly what Fweet would do, which is take a heap snapshot. That can be kind of convenient. So we'll just go ahead and do that. And then we can go back to Fweet and let it keep running. And what it's going to do is it'll actually show us which array or map or set or whatever it is is leaking uh, if we have the dev tools open. So like right now it's paused right here. Uh, if you click on the call stack, it'll show you exactly where we are. And we're inside of this little function that Fweet is running inside of the browser. And it, ha it has the leaked object right here. I'll zoom in. So this is actually the array that is leaking. And you can see it's an array of eight containing eight some big objects. The reason it's eight is because Sweet does one uh, pre-flight iteration, then it does those seven iterations. So it has size eight. Uh, so this is just the object right here. And you can actually just do whatever you want with this object in the console, uh, inspect it, kind of look, poke around, uh, see exactly what it looks like. If that's not inf enough information, another technique that I use sometimes is like you can uh, override the methods that um, that would push to the array. So for instance, like 
you know, let's just take the push and cache it somewhere. And then we'll just define a new thing to set a breakpoint. Uh, and we'll just return the original value. So this is just setting a breakpoint in here anytime push is called. And then at this point, uh, we're paused in the debugger, but we've modified this object. So I can press play and Fleet will pause uh, at the point where it's going to take its second heap snapshot, which is a good point where you can just take, take your second heap snapshot for analysis. Um, but right now we have this push function. So what I can do is now I have live access to the page. I'll just click info and you can see it gave me this, this breakpoint right here. And the reason it did, I can, I can check the call stack is because somebody is pushing to this array and I can see that the person who's pushing to this array is this file right here on line 20. So this is a pretty effective way to just kind of figure out who is adding on to this array or object or map or set or whatever. Um, it's a little bit manual, but it's, this is the best way to do it. And then if that's not helpful enough, um, you can look in the actual memory, the heap snapshots right here, and you can do the exact same thing that Fweet would do, which is just take the second snapshot, compare it to the first one. And then if you look in here at the deltas, um, we've done seven iterations between these two. So you can just kind of look for something that leaked seven times, which is what Fweet does. And we should see there's this some big object. So inside of here, you can just use the, the basic Chrome dev tools to look at what's retaining the object. Uh, it'll give you links to where it was allocated. So you can click here, for instance, and now we're at this line of code where the object was created. So that's just another way to do the exact same thing. So this is a pretty basic overview of how to use Fweet to debug memory leaks. Uh, I hope that it's helpful. Thanks.